we were talking about last time that uh, Flutter supports currently supports six platforms. So platform specific code. Let's say if you want if you want to add configuration files for Android only, you go to the Android what folder. If you want to add configuration files for iOS, you go to iOS. Uh, same goes with the ones for Linux, then Mac OS, then web, and then there's also Windows. But our major focus will, as we are learning, will majorly be Android. Okay, it will majorly be Android for now. But then you know that we we can always share uh, methods to compile the end result. Because remember, Flutter, you write says you're using a single code base, so you write code once, and then it will run on all those platforms. Yeah, so that's the beauty of it. So we are going to choose to run our code on Android. Okay our code on Android, run and test it on Android, and then we shall always build and test on other platforms also. Okay, so this is the file that they were telling us, the main .dat file. So this is the entry point for every Flutter program. There has to be a main .dat, and it's found inside the lib folder. Okay. The lib folder is where the main Flutter files are supposed to be put. All your source code is supposed to be put in the Flutter, what? In the, in the lib folder. If you want images and all the other things, you can always create another folder and name it, let's say, assets. Okay. But for today, we are going to majorly look at Flutter widgets and also how and we familiarize ourselves with the structure and how we can play around with these widgets to come around to come up with UIs that are nice. Right? Yeah. So if you're to look at the basic structure of a home, a flutter, a flutter program. There is always a widget that is generated for you when you first run, when you first create a Flutter program, and it's called a home page widget. Okay, so as you can see, it's a home page here. Then it has a build method. So a build method is the one that is used for rendering any other UI. Okay, and that build method is called scaffold usually. Okay, but you can always, of course, dodge this since Flutter makes it so flexible for anyone to use. Yeah, so a scaffold has uh, something like an app bar, okay? And then you can also put things such as centers and bodies in a scaffold, really. So a scaffold is like the whole thing that uh, uh, encompasses your Android apps. Yeah, so all other widgets fall under it, okay? Other tiny widgets, with both platform-specific and the ones that are independent, yeah? So if we look at an example of that, this is this is how uh, the first code that is generated by the Flutter program looks like. So what we usually do is we we remove these comments because they generate a lot of comments. These comments are used to guide you, and sometimes, uh, but you don't usually always need to reuse it. You get used to these comments, so you just remove them, like I'm going to do. So I move these comments, okay? So this is basically that code. Whatever you're seeing here is that code. It's just that it's uh, it's in a framework flutter now, okay? The same data type string that we are seeing, okay? These operators, increment operators are here, okay? Yeah, so basically when you create a new flutter program, this is, this, are, this is the boilerplate code they give you. So this is basically all boilerplate. Boilerplate meaning they give you some code that you can start with and you modify. Yeah. So we're going to just be deleting these comments to make the code shorter. So if we focus on that structure and we first see what we're talking about in terms of uh, the home page. Yeah, so this is like a home page uh, class, okay? So here they're saying class by home page extends a stateful widget. Okay. When we looked at uh, object oriented programming last time, we talked that uh, a child class in, in inherits from a parent class. For this case, uh, my home page is inheriting from a parent class stateful widget. Okay. We shall explain those concepts also. But for now, just look at the structure. When you come to home page, uh, this is for stateful widget, then the real syntax comes and sits here. We're looking at scaffold, okay? So what does the scaffold have? It has like an app bar, then we have a body. So the body by default comes when they have centered some other widgets, center widget, and the center widget can have a child, 
Okay, so here they are saying the child is a column. Okay, yeah. So we are going to run this code later on, since uh, I want most of our sessions today to be uh, practical. We're no longer going to do a lot of theory. The theory we did most of it when we were looking at uh, the introduction to that. Okay, so a widget build visualization. So widgets can be grouped into multiple categories based on their features. Yeah, platform specific, that is to say Android or iOS, then they are uh, layout widgets, okay? Then there are state maintenance widgets, then are platform independent slash basic widgets, okay? So let's look at platform specific widgets. So these ones, uh, they belong to a particular platform. For example, Android or iOS. Notice how they are not mentioning, they're not mentioning Linux or Windows, okay? Because those, those platforms like Linux or Windows are not strict. People can use them in any way. You can design programs that have navigation in any way. But then the most important part that you should never uh, take for granted is how people use Android apps and how people use iOS apps. There is a very big difference usually. Yeah, their animations, uh, how their menus look like are always so different. That's why uh, the, all the documentation that you find out there talks about majorly addressing two types of widgets for Android and for iOS. So Android specific widgets are designed in accordance with material design guideline by Android OS, and they are called as material widgets, okay? Hence material design. Then the iOS specific widgets are designed in accordance with the uh, human interface guidelines by Apple, and they are called as Cupertino widgets. Yeah, so these are some of the examples of the material widgets that we're going to see as we as we keep on with uh, the development. There is what we call a scaffold, like we looked at it. Uh, we looked at it shortly backwards. So uh, a scaffold encompasses other items such as an app bar, bodies, and you can also add, let's say, bottom navigation bars to a scaffold. So it's a very, very important aspect of Flutter programming. Most times people use scaffolds. If you're not using a scaffold, then uh, you run into a lot of design issues because it comes with a certain parts that are predefined for you that just make everything easy. Then app bars, we shall look at what an app bar is. Okay, we shall look at what an app bar is. Then there, there's that design for bottom navigation bars. There are those apps such as Instagram. When you look at uh, the bottom, they have bottom navigation bars. Then we also have, uh, let's say, when you look at the X app, it has the bottom navigation bars. Then tab bars. Tab bars are also a, a unique type of bar. It's for navigation, wherever you tap a certain tab, and then they show you data. Yeah. But notice that you may not use all these in your apps. Usually, when you have too many types of navigation uh, bars in the same app, you, you, you tend to create a UI that is too clut cluttered and your users get lost in the process. So you're supposed to make, you have to choose one style usually and make it as simple as possible. Use it, uh, design it in a way that users don't get lost. Okay, when you're building an app, we focus on solving a problem. So the fastest way that a user can solve and so use the app and solve the problem is what you aim to achieve. And then there's a widget called a list style. This is just a, a normal tile that is used to display certain data. Okay, we shall also see it. Then there are what they call raised buttons. Okay, so raised buttons are buttons that existed in Flutter, let's say 1.2, but currently we call them elevated buttons. Yeah, there are those buttons that look like they are, they are popping up. Then there's what they call a floating action button. But this is also some important aspect that we shall probably look up in the in the coming in the coming sessions. Yeah. Then we have flat buttons. Flat buttons these days are called text buttons. They are flat. They don't pop up. They are the opposite of what raised or elevated buttons. Then there are icon buttons. An icon can be used as a button in what flutter. Then there are drop down buttons. Okay. So this is this is self explanatory drop down. When you touch it, uh, certain items pop out and then you can choose something. Then there is a pop-up menu button. Okay, So this one pops up. Items appear upwards. Then there are button bars. 
button bars are used for aligning buttons also. Then there's what they call a text field. This is also one a very important uh, widget in Flutter. It is used for collecting input from users. Okay. So there are actually two types. There's a text field, then there's a text form field. Okay. So their implementations are not so different, but then it's always a matter of choice when you're programming Flutter. Then there's a checkbox. A checkbox is basically used to collect uh, multiple types of data. For example, if, if you're building, let's say, an app for booking meals in a restaurant, you could check the foods that you want and leave out the ones that you don't want. Okay. Then there is a radio button. Radio button is that which gives you an option to choose one thing. For example, you may use it when you're choosing, let's say, genders. You're trying to program a menu whereby someone can choose their genders. They're signing up. Okay. Then there is a switch. Yeah, switch is that one that you use for on and off functionalities. So it's, it has one status, on and off, and it's only one button. So things such as switches can be used for in your apps for putting menus such as something to toggle between light mode and dark mode. Since these days, a lot of people use a dark mode. So you can create like a switch. That's just an example. Then there are sliders. Sliders are basically used to have certain content that is movable. Then there are date and time pickers. These ones are used uh, in Flutter to be able to allow guys to design applications that can be used to pick time, date and time. Let's say if you're signing up and they tell you to choose your date of birth. So rather than typing your date of birth, which usually brings errors, because sometimes you can type your date of birth in a form and then the format of the data is really disorganized. Maybe you may decide to start with your month, then the date, then the year. And yet the, the software is expecting the year, the month, then the date.